Okay, you guys, so I'm going to do another chit chat tutorial, get ready with me, something along those lines, um, kind of like I did in my last tutorial video where I just answer questions and I talk with you guys while I'm doing my makeup and I'll kind of tell you guys what I'm doing as I go. And I actually really wanted to use this product. This is the Essence Metal Shock Eyeshadow and it's like a liquid eyeshadow and it's in this really pretty kind of like gunmetal greeny color and I thought this would be really fun to play around with so I want to use that and then I also got these palettes in from Urban Decay this one is called the shortcut palette and it's basically like these plummy kind of warm colors and this one is the bailout palette and it's kind of more neutrals but it has this really pretty purple color right here and then this one is the detour palette and again, this one's pretty neutral as well, maybe a little bit warmer neutral, and then it has this pretty like blue color. So I think I'm gonna play around with these as well. I don't really know what I'm gonna do today, but I wanted to do something kind of like smoky for the holidays, I think is what I wanna do. So we're just gonna kind of wing it and cross our fingers and hope this turns out good. I was gonna actually do fake lashes today, but I ran out of lash glue, so that is a no-go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start off with my foundation. I'm using the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. I'm actually using a darker color than I used last time because I feel like the color I used last time is like a little too light for me. This is in 2.1, so hopefully this is a little bit better match. So I'm gonna answer some questions that I didn't get to in the last video um, because I got a lot of questions and I only got to like four or five questions last time and I always feel bad when I ask for you guys to ask me questions and then I don't get, in go don't get into any of the questions because I just feel bad about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just answer some of the ones that you guys asked last time. So this is from Gen C Kitty. Are you a glass is half full type of person or a half, glass is half empty type of person? And this is an interesting question actually. Um, I would like you guys to comment below what you guys think I am. Am I a glass is half full or glass is half empty? And if you don't know what that means, because I'm gonna be honest, I remember when I was younger, I was taking one of those MySpace surveys <laughs> And that was a question on the MySpace survey. Am I a glasses half full or glasses half empty person? And I remember reading that question and being like, not understanding it. Like I thought it meant like, if I see a glass that is half full, like do I say it's half full or half empty? Like I thought about it so literally. <laughs> like I didn't know it was like a metaphor for like an optimist or a pessimist. So am I half full or half empty? To be honest, I don't think I'm either. I don't think I'm an optimist or a pessimist. I think I'm kind of like a realist. <laughs> like, and I mean that genuinely. Like I tend to be a very pragmatic person. I think sometimes people take my pragmatism as pessimism. I'm just naturally a very realistic person. Like, but I realize this a lot when I, um, since I've been with Travis for so many years because Travis is a realistic, optimist or a realistic idealist that's travis and because of that i've really started to notice kind of like my pragmatic nature because for him everything is like oh this could be great we could do this like we could buy this house and it'll be just the best thing ever or we could do this with our careers or you could do this and i want to do this and he's a very like optimistic idealistic type person which is great but i always tend to just see things as very as it is, you know, like nothing is too negative, nothing is too positive, but this is how it is. But it's funny though, because sometimes when I look back at like my past and like all of my past memories and I look at my life like in the past, like a lot of my friends or people that I know in real life tend to look at their past negatively. Like they see a lot of their memories as like bad or negative you know, like, oh, I hated high school, or oh, I hated this time in my life, or oh, that time in my life was so hard. And they see their past and their past memories as like being very difficult. But like, in my mind, like my entire past is so romanticized. Like I have this very, very like positive view of like memories, which I don't know where that comes from, but even like some of the hardest times in my life, in my mind, seem like positive. So in that sense, I do kind of feel like I'm a positive person. Like I tend, I think, to focus on the positive without even realizing it because when I remember them in the future, everything just seems so positive and happy. Like my whole life has just been this happy little bubble of goodness, you know? So in that way, I feel like maybe I'm an optimist, but I think 
technically speaking, I'm probably just kind of a realist. Now I am contouring and I'm contouring with the Beached Bronzer by Urban Decay. And did I put concealer on? Yes, I did, I put concealer on. <laughs> so I put the Hard Candy Concealer on, which I've had a lot of people ask me like where I get that. I get it at Walmart. Um, and somebody said they didn't have it on their website, which is kind of odd, but yeah. And then for my powder, I just use my NYX loose powder, which I use every day. Sometimes doing chit chat tutorials is stressful. <laughs> like talking and doing your makeup at the same time, there's a lot going on, especially like trying to answer questions like the way you want to answer them. And then if you feel like you don't answer them right, like you can't go back because then you're missing like a bunch of the makeup tutorial. So you have to like make sure you're answering them the way you want to answer them the first time around. Okay, so this person says, Please talk about your favorite quotes. Okay, so this is the question that I didn't get to in my last one that I said I would get to in this one. And a lot of you guys said that you wanted me to do this in the next chit chat tutorial. So I will talk about this. Um, so I will go through some of my quotes on Pinterest because I'm a Pinterest junkie. If you guys don't follow me there, I definitely would recommend it because I love Pinterest. Uh, I'm always on there. Usually at nights I get on there and I just, lose myself in Pinterest. Like that's where I get most of my recipes. So for my blush, I'm just using the Koki Blush Up in Rose Glow. And I really like this palette. It has the most beautiful colors. This is like the perfect blush palette ever. I think this was in my best products of the year last year. And then for highlighter, the Pixi Aspen Ovard Highlighter in Santorini Sunset. It's just a champagne-y highlighter. It's really, really pretty. But I find that these you have to apply with a beauty blender because they're not overly pigmented. So I apply them with a beauty blender and I feel like I get a really pretty glow. Do you see that? Like I don't like those metaphorical quotes that literally make no sense. Those like get on my nerves. Actually, did you guys know I have a board on my Pinterest? It's a private board. I'm such a weirdo, you guys. But it's stupid quotes. And I pin all of the quotes that I find really stupid in that board because sometimes I just, find quotes to be really dumb. And I think they're hilarious because so many people pin them and I'm like, that's the dumbest quote ever. Oh, I love this one. This is from Susan Cain's book, Quiet. There is zero correlation between being the best talker and having the best ideas. That is one of my favorite quotes. I love it because um, I think that that's something that a lot of quiet people feel they lack. Like they feel like people don't know them, don't know their deepest thoughts don't know their deepest ideas or feelings on things because they just don't, they're unable to voice their ideas well or they're just scared to or they're shy. Um, and just because somebody doesn't voice their opinions or don't share, you know, what they think and things like that, their ideas does not mean that they don't have good ideas. It's just they're more closed off and quiet about it. And I think that this is really important, not just for people that are extroverts to think about, but also people that are natural introverts. And sometimes they feel like, you know, they're misunderstood because they don't talk a lot. Um, I know I've been in that place where I feel like I'm highly misunderstood. In fact, this is one of my biggest pet peeves in life is feeling misunderstood. I really hate that feeling of people not knowing the real me, but I feel like it's the story of my life. Like, because I'm not a huge talker, um, people don't understand who I am as a person sometimes, and that really bothers me. Um, so I think that this quote is really interesting. By the way, I'm using this palette. This is the Bailout palette. I'm using kind of these two colors for my blender shade. Oh, I love this quote. This might come across as like really mean, but I really like this quote. The problem with the world is that intelligent people are full of doubts and the stupid ones are full of confidence. Just think about that for a little bit. I know that's kind of harsh. There's nothing I love more than a person that doubts, a person that is skeptical, a person that just likes to talk and come up with new ideas and just kind of go against the grain when it comes to ideas and theories. Like that's my favorite type of person. And I feel like there's a different type of intelligence with somebody like that because they're not afraid to question. And I love people like that because they see the world in a very different way. And so it's people that have like an answer to every issue. You know what I mean? Those people that just have an answer and that answer is the right answer and that is it, period. Like there's no sense of <laughs> questioning or doubt or anything. Ooh, this one. I love this one. This one is amazing. A lot of bad things are going to happen to you, 
first off, you were going to die. So that said, there's not much to worry about. No matter what else happens, you really only have two options. You can either handle things well and be happy, or you can handle them poorly and be miserable. I think that that is the best, most truest quote of all time. Like, I think that people, like, don't understand that concept. Like, it's literally a choice on how you handle a situation. Like, it's true. You can have, like, horrible things happen to you, but you can either choose to handle it well and live your life content, or you can choose to deal with the bad things that happen to you bad and be miserable. Like, literally. That's how it works. And I love this quote because I think it's so true. Okay, so this one's my one of my favorites. So this quote is by Albert Camus. So Albert Camus is one of my favorite philosophers. I love him to pieces and he's such a babe for his time. You will never be happy if you continue to search for what happiness consists of. You will never live if you are looking for the meaning of life. Like I feel like a lot of people, and I see this a lot guys, like I see this a lot, especially on YouTube. Like I could actually think of people in my head that fit into this category. And I feel like people are so obsessed with trying to figure out the key to happiness that they forget to actually experience life. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that this is why like self-help gets so popular and people that read a lot of self-help and people that are constantly on this search for happiness are never gonna find it because that is just not how life works. And there's people out there that I feel like are on this constant search to figure out what that thing is that's going to give them all the happiness that they've been looking for their entire life. They're trying to fill that void with some sort of key thing that's gonna make them happy, right? Like looking for happiness isn't going to bring you happiness. Just accepting your lack of control, your lack of understanding, your lack of clarity, your lack of everything, that is when you become content. And I think I've always kind of lived my life this way. It's like. The most important thing in life is to just experience it. Experience it for all it is and understand that nothing happens for a reason. You have to just like accept life for its absurdity and its obscurity and its randomness. And once you do that, it's like become at peace with the uncertainties of life. And I think that there's a difference between happiness and contentment and people need to realize that contentment is just kind of like acceptance. And that's why I don't really like self-help books because I do think that it's just a bunch of people trying to give desperate people answers, but there is no answer. It's just acceptance. It's, it's acceptance of the good and the bad. And I think that people just have to understand that like, and stop trying to live your life as if it's a problem to be solved because it's not. It's just an experience and you have to just experience it and enjoy it and have fun with it, you know? Okay, that was a long little spiel there. I'm really sorry. One of my favorite quotes though of all time, this is a quote that I believe in more than anything in the world. And I wish that more people could hear this quote because I would have loved this quote as a kid. And I think it's one of the most true quotes in the world. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. Is that not the truest statement ever? And I feel like this is the biggest issue with the public school systems and society in general, is that everyone is held to the same standards. Everyone has to be good at math, reading, writing, arithmetic, and if you're not, then you must be stupid then. And we get it plant implanted in our heads that if you are not the best at math or you are not the best at spelling or if you're not the best at reading, then you must have a problem. People always assume that if you're really good at art, well, that's not an intelligence that matters for some reason. That's just what we grow to believe. And I think that this is one of the most important quotes to drill into kids' heads. And I do not want my daughters to feel that way at all. Like I want Elena to know like, her artistic abilities and artistic skills and her just drive to create and her ability to do it is an intelligence in itself. I think we write off certain types of intelligence because it's not the norm in schools. You know what I mean? And I think that's so, it bothers me. Like I could rant about that forever, honestly, because I think that's honestly what caused me a lot of insecurities growing up is this idea that I wasn't intelligent because I wasn't intelligent in the ways that the school systems made me think I should be intelligent in. 
I'm gonna go to the next question because I don't want to go on forever. Like I could literally answer this question forever. If you guys want me to make more videos about quotes or maybe I can talk more about quotes in the future if you guys want that in upcoming chatty videos, I can. Have you ever considered writing a book? If so, about what? Um, I have actually. And I've had a few different ideas, but like I don't know if they're ever gonna come to fruition because honestly, like I don't have a lot of confidence in writing, but I've thought about telling my eating disorder story because I think I'm one of those rare, not rare, I mean, people can do it, but I'm one of those people that had a full recovery and I went through a lot of hardships with my eating disorder and there's a lot of stuff I didn't cover in my eating disorder story video. Um, like what it's like to be in the hospital, how crazy your mind goes, you know, when you are deep in an eating disorder, and then how to fully recover and how to recover successfully. I always thought that that would be an interesting book to write, but I don't know where to start with stuff like that. Like, I have this weird wall up when it comes to big projects like that, where it's like, where do you even begin? You know what I mean? Like, it's so overwhelming and intimidating to like start a project like that. Uh, public school versus private schools? Honestly, either, to be honest. I think if you can afford private school, I think that's amazing. Where did that <laughs> eyeshadow go that I was gonna use? That gunmetal one. Um, I've actually looked at charter schools for Elena um, that focus more on art and like things that they're interested in and it also helps them move at a pace um, that fits them. Um, I think it's kind of like how Montessori works where you kind of go as like you progress. So if you progress very quickly, then you kind of move on to the next thing. And it's more like individual based versus like, um, you have to hit certain markers at a certain time. And I've kind of thought about charter schooling for Elena, but if I ever did, I would wait probably until she's a little bit older. But I think private schools, if you can afford it, I think they're great. So I don't know, we'll see. So I'm gonna apply this. This is that Metal Shock by Essence, and this is in the color why doesn't this have a color on it? <laughs> Supernova. And it's just a really pretty kind of gunmetal color. I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Should I do it in the middle? Like I'm so tempted to put it right here in the middle and then blend it out with my finger because that's how I do my makeup all the time. But I think I'm gonna do something different just to change things up. So I'm gonna put it kind of in the center of my eyes. Like this. And blend. I actually don't use liquid eyeshadows like this often because um, they just feel weird to me, like putting liquid on. I don't know, I just feel like it's gonna like ruin my makeup. But we're gonna go with it. Then I'm gonna blend it out with my finger. Okay, so then I'm gonna take that same other color. Where is it? Bailout palette. I was using Rebound right here, right there for the lid. I'm just gonna take that same color and just kind of like blend it into that glitter. So we get a nice blend. What is your stance on marijuana? Um, I think marijuana is fine. Um, I think that there's a lot of benefits to marijuana, like medical benefits. I think it can help a lot of different ailments. Um, and I don't have a problem with marijuana, uh, to be honest. I think it's less harmful than alcohol a lot of times, but I do think that you know it needs to be used in balance just like any drug, just like alcohol, just and I think it's definitely something that you can get addicted to or use too often because people do use drugs like alcohol and marijuana as an escape from real life and I think that's harmful but I don't think that marijuana is any more dangerous than like alcohol. Um, you know, have I smoked? Yes, but it's like not my favorite thing to do. Like I don't find it to be needed really in my life. I don't know, I just don't find marijuana to be that exciting but I'm gonna put a little bit on my lower lash line right here in the middle, just for fun, because why not? And I'm gonna blend it. I'm gonna use just this Aspen Ovard highlighter and a paintbrush, because I use paintbrushes for my makeup sometimes. <laughs> and I'm gonna put that in the inner corner. And that kind of, I feel like, just blends everything together, kind of. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this makeup look, to be honest, so far. I always feel this way, and then once I get my eyeliner on, I'm always like completely happy with it. It's the eyeliner that like makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna go into this. This is the Rose Palette by Bare Minerals, and I'm gonna go into this Stargazer color because it's like a dark kind of charcoal. I'm gonna put that 
right here in the outer corner because I feel like the inner part is darker and that just looks weird. <laughs> like I said guys, I am just like playing around with this look. I'm not actually like knowing what I'm doing, but sometimes I feel like it's kind of fun to watch like a beauty person just like make up a look as they go. They don't go into it with like a plan. <laughs> Because that's like the fun part about makeup, you know what I mean? It's just like experimenting, so. Sometimes I feel like I need to get in the habit of doing my face makeup after I do my eye makeup, but I can't do it. Like I can't get into that habit. Like there's something about doing my eye makeup when my face makeup isn't done yet that drives me crazy. Like I feel like I can't get the full effect of what the eyes look like. And it's so hard for me to do my eye makeup before my face makeup, but I know that it's so much better because of fallout and stuff and it would look better, but I just can't do it. I need to wait and do my mascara for my eyeliner to dry. This eyeliner, is it even? I'm gonna do my lipstick. Now I could either do a neutral color, or I could do something a little bit darker, or I could mix them together. I'm a lip mixer. A lot of times people ask me like, what lip color are you wearing? But it's like a mixture of two colors a lot of times. But I like to do dark and then light over the top because I kind of feel like it gives a really subtle, nice gradient. And I also like doing a little bit of dark because I can shape my lips better. This looks very watermelony on camera, but it's a nice like neutral color in real life. Do I like that, guys? I don't know, do I? <laughs> Does that look good or bad? I don't know, I can't tell. How do you stay so thin? Do you exercise or just eat healthy? Um, okay. I am just genetically built thinner. Like if you guys have seen my mom, you guys know what I mean. My mom is like this. Um, we just have those genes. Like it's really hard for me to kind of like gain weight. And I don't think I overeat necessarily. I just kind of like eat like a normal amount of food, but I can eat kind of whatever I want. I think it's just genetics. <laughs> I don't work out. I do want to work out because just because you look a certain way on the outside doesn't mean that you're healthy on the inside. And I do want to start working out. In fact, it's probably one of my 2019 goals. I was working out for a while. I was doing those like videos on YouTube that I was talking about. I can't remember what they're called now off the top of my head. Um, but my cousin told me about them and I was doing them for a while, but I want to get in the habit of doing them again. Fitness Blender, that's what it is, Fitness Blender. And they're like really short, quick videos that do not last very long at all. And they really do work you out. And I like to do those every day, maybe like one or two of the videos. And it's quick, you feel like you're getting a good workout and you get sore afterwards, but they're fast because I don't like working out forever. Like I just don't like working out in general. So those fitness blender videos are great, especially the shorter ones. And I really do wanna work out a little bit, make my body stronger. Um, because as a mom, I feel like sometimes like you neglect yourself. And I definitely do neglect myself when it comes to fitness and like what's healthy for me. Because, you know, you're constantly focusing on other people. But I do wanna be a healthier person. You know, Travis works out a lot. He does a lot of basketball. And he's a very healthy person, but but I do feel like those fitness blender videos do do wonders and they're really, really easy and they're really fast and they do work because I'm always sore after I do them. So I don't like this lip color. I'm gonna change it. I'll be right back. Is that better? That's better. It's a little on the pinky side, but I feel like I like that better. And I'm also going to curl my lashes one more time because I'm a weirdo. This is the final look, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Do you guys like this look? I actually really like this product. I think it's actually pretty awesome. It was a little bit hard to blend out. I'm not gonna lie, like to try to get a good gradient there. But I do think that the color's really pretty and it has a lot of glitter in it. But it's also very just like smoky and subtle. Like you're not getting like this bright pop of glitter. Like I feel like it's a pretty wearable color. So I'm kind of into this. I think it's a pretty fun product. Um, I kind of want to play with it maybe a little bit more or maybe buy a couple other colors. This is the Metal Shock Eyeshadows by Essence. So yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Kind of fun to play with. So I hope you guys like this look. Kind of like a glam, holiday inspired look. Something a little more dramatic, smoky for like a holiday party. It'll look really cool with like a little black dress. 
or something along those lines. So I hope you guys like this. Sorry I got a little deep with the topics of conversation today, but I just tend to do that when I do these like get ready with me chatty things. I hope you guys don't mind it. Sometimes I wish I could get to more questions and like answer them quicker, but I have a hard time with that, especially if we're talking like quotes or philosophy or life or anything like that. Like I just can literally just like talk forever. But anyways, I hope you guys liked it and I hope you guys like this tutorial, this makeup look, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Let me know if you guys like these little chatty tutorials. I think they're kind of fun to do and they're a little bit more fun than maybe just like your basic music professional looking tutorial. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys soon and I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye!